Hey everyone, it's Kenji. I'm here at home and today I'm going to make Jacques Pepin's burgers. So this video is another one for the Jacques Pepin Foundation. Um, Jacques Pepin is, I mean, <laughs> easily my biggest cooking idol. Um, and the reason he's such an idol of mine, and um, I'm going to talk as I go. Um, so I'm going to preheat, start preheating this skillet here. It's a little cast iron skillet. Um, Jacques Pepin uses a, um, a, what's it called? A grill pan, but I personally don't own any, so I'm going with just the regular skillet. I'm sure he would not mind, and I'm setting my broiler to high. Um, so, why did I pick a burger um, for my Jacques Pepin recipe? Um, it's because I think, to me, the fact that Jacques Pepin, um, despite his years and decades of being a chef, and then an educator and a TV personality and all these, you know, a cookbook author. Um, in his latest show, um, which was on, uh, called Heart and Soul, came out a couple of years ago. In his latest show, he does a whole, he does a whole episode about um, when he was cooking with Julia um, on their old show um, and reminiscing about some of their favorite, the favorite things that they cooked together. Um, and so here he is after this, like, long career... Um, and he just shows you how to make a hamburger, and it's like the simplest thing. Um, so that's why I chose it, because I think more than anyone, you know, Jacques Pepin sort of embodies that nature, that idea that, um, you know, just because you have the ability and the knowledge to cook something um, that would be considered by, you know, Western standards to be sort of a fancy meal or something like that, um, doesn't mean that you can't also appreciate simple dishes and what could be simpler than a hamburger. Um, so I'm starting with about five ounces of beef, which is what he recommends. Um, in his, in the episode of his show, he actually, um, he actually grinds his own brisket, um, which I think is a great way to go if you, um, if you have some nice fatty brisket or if you have some short ribs, um, anything with a good amount of marbling in it, you can grind it yourself. Um, he does it He does it using a, um, a food processor, so the easiest way to do that is you just trim off all the sort of grizzly bits. And then you, um, I find that, he puts them straight into a food processor. I find that the easiest way to do it actually is to um, put them on a sheet tray with some the, the bits of, of meat on a sheet tray with some space separating them and throw them in the freezer for about 15 minutes so they get a little bit firm before you then pulse them in a food processor. Um, and you can, of course, also just use a meat grinder. But he also says if, you're, if you don't want to go through that trouble, which today I didn't feel like it, um, use ground chuck. So around 20% fat. Oops. <laughs> and the other thing he does is he never, he doesn't season his burger until the end. So I'm obviously only very loosely following it. Um, his, I'll, I'll, I'll season that one side and save the other side for later. The reason he only seasons the burger at the end, um, and this is just a good rule in general for burgers, is that you, when you add salt to meat, um, especially ground meat, um, it can actually dissolve some muscle proteins that will then sort of cross-link with each other and end up um, making your burger tougher. Um, the effect, it doesn't really matter um, if you salt the surface. What you definitely don't want to do, though, is um, add salt to the inside and sort of work it into the burger, because that's literally how you make um, sausage. And we're not making sausage, we're making hamburgers. Um, you make, you know, sausage is meat plus salt, basically. Meat, salt, and effort, and that's about it. Um, and so, if you were to add salt to your hamburger, and I'll, I'll link to a video where I demonstrate this, but if you were to add salt to your hamburger meat before forming the patties, um, they come out super sort of springy and tough. All right, so I got my burger going. So normally I would recommend like a really light um, hamburger bun, um, but of course there are different styles of burgers. And that was actually one of the things I liked most about the old ja Jacques and Julia episode is that they both make completely different styles of burger. Um, so where Julia does a sort of classic you know, diner style kind of thin, thin burger that's on a soft bun. Jacques does this larger, juicier burger. And what I really love is that he is the first to say that there's no, you know, right way or wrong way to do it. It's just a matter of preference. It's not that one is better than the other. It's just a matter of preference. Um, that's sort of a running theme in his work. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of chefs who um, went through very tough periods when they were younger. Um, and if you've read his book, um, The Apprentice, you'd know that he had a very tough life um, in kitchens. Um, you know, worked through the classic brigade system, so, you know, worked his way up. And th there's a lot of people 
who went through that process who see it as sort of a badge of honor and think to themselves, hey, like, I went through this abuse and so now, you know, now I'm in a position where I can lay it on to other people. Whereas people like Pepin, he's he's always been the, hey, I went through this abuse and did it, did, did, was that abuse necessary in making me a better chef? Um, and I think he realizes the answer is no. Um, and so rather than, you know, taking away that lesson from, from, from the, uh, you know, the, the, the hardships he had as a young cook, rather, rather than taking away the lesson that those hardships are good because they built him into the chef he is today, um, he comes with, at it from the opposite approach um, where he says, you know, everybody started somewhere. There's, there's you know, not, no, nobody was born knowing how to make a hamburger. So even something as simple as a hamburger, he'll never sort of talk down to you while he's teaching you how to make it um, because not everyone knows how to make a hamburger. Um, so onion, lettuce, tomato, you can do whatever you like. Um, so Jacques Pepin insists that he does, he does onion, lettuce, tomato, and ketchup. I personally do not like ketchup on my burger, so I'm not going to use it. I'm going to instead go with the Julia approach, which is jazz mayonnaise. I'm going to give this burger a couple flips. Now, a lot of burger recipes will, um, especially I find, you know, from from non-American sources. So if you look at like a British chef's burger recipe, frequently they will add, you know, Worcestershire sauce or onions or parsley or whatever eggs to their burger. Um, I think I, I, I'm of the mind that a hamburger should not have that stuff added to it, that when you add that stuff to me, it kind of makes it taste like a meatloaf sandwich as opposed to a hamburger. Um, and so I was actually very ple ple pleasantly surprised to find that, you know, Jacques Pepin, who's a, a chef and a European chef at that, um, follows the same sort of protocol. Um, he, write, he uses Gruyere cheese, so that's what I'm going with today. Um, I think Gruyere is a fine choice for a hamburger. Um, I would never turn down American, but Gruyere works. All right, so I'm just gonna toss that under the broiler to help the cheese, to help the cheese melt. I'm gonna drop my bun in the bottom. Now this is the final trick that he does, which I think um, is great. He takes a piece of garlic, and once he has his toasted bread, makes sure the bread is nicely crusty, and then he rubs it with garlic. And this is something you would do for, you know, whether it's Italian style bruschetta, or um, if you're doing like um, pan tomaquet, you know, um, Catalonian tomato bread, same technique rubbing a clove of garlic. All right, now I'm gonna start constructing iceberg lettuce, which Jacques also recommends, and I can't agree more. I think iceberg lettuce is great for hamburgers. It has the crunch that you want. And I don't know, I mean, people who say iceberg lettuce has no flavor, I don't know where you're getting your iceberg lettuce from, but it has, just has a different flavor than romaine, but I find it to be, you know, sweet and crunchy and delicious. Um, so of the sort of blander lettuces, iceberg and romaine, I find it actually to be tastier than romaine. All right. There's our burger. Big tomato slice. Season the tomato, of course. Always season tomato. Salt and pepper. And just like Jack did in his show, he forgot to put the ketchup on the bottom. Um, I forgot to put the mayonnaise on the bottom. I normally would put the mayonnaise on the bottom, but I'm not this time. QP mayo for me. And I do like to put my toppings on the bottom, as does he. Hmm. What I was gonna say about Jacques Pepin is that when I was a line cook, he came into my the restaurant I was working at once, not my restaurant, but he came to the restaurant I was working at once. Um, and the chef, knowing that I was a huge fan, um, asked me at the end of the meal if I wanted to come out and talk with him. And I was like, is that allowed? Because he's like a guest at the restaurant. I'm not, I'm just a cook. And he's like, yeah, yeah, like Jack would, um, would absolutely um, 
be fine with you coming out to talk to him. And so I went out and I talked to him and he gave me, you know, he came back in with me into the kitchen to look at my station and he gave me advice on how to cook and he gave me advice on my career. Um, and he, I mean, I was just a, you know, an, an $11 an hour minimum wage line cook. Um, and he took out, you know, he took the time to come and talk to me, which I thought was unbelievable. Um, and over the years, you know, I've met him now several times over the years, five or six times. Um, he never remembers who I am, of course, because he has, um, he speaks with a lot of people every, every year. He meets a lot of people. Um, but to me, it's almost even more telling that he doesn't remember who I am. And yet every time I've met him, he has been nothing but supportive, and kind um, and nice and you know he's just like a born educator and and to me you know something to admire and something to strive for all right just like he does I'm gonna cut my burger in half so I can take a look looks good to me all right Jack Pepin's hamburger here we go oh you know what I did last thing I forgot to do because I'm used to seasoning my burgers before um, I cook them. I forgot to season them after, which is what he recommends. So salt, a little salt, a little pepper. I'll get the other side in a second. But let's, let's take our bite of this one first, huh? Shall we? Mm-mm. Not your classic American cheeseburger by any sense. But, boy, is it delicious. All right, guys, gals, non-binary pals, thank you for watching. Now go and watch some Jack Pepin. All right, bye-bye.